<laughs> Welcome back, Halftime TV viewers and subscribers. And it's been a wonderful day for football. It's been a wonderful day for the neutrals and for fans like myself who don't have a horse in the race. It's even better. Now, we're, we're still wondering what color London is. And for the Arsenal fans who were coming into this game and expecting that it was a perfect opportunity for them to run away with the league, Aston Villa had different plans for them. We'll go into that and a little bit more as we go further into this show. But remember, smash the like button, subscribe to Halftime TV if you haven't yet done so. Some big news out of the English League because Aston Villa all but confirmed who the 2023-2024 winner of the English Premier League will be. And that's hugely thanks to Jamaica's very own Leon Bailey, who came from the bench and inspired an incredible performance. 30 minutes came on in the 60th minute, and I must say the 30 minutes that followed, Arsenal would have wished that never happened. But again, before we even get to that, let me just say what a weekend of football it was. And I'll invite you, the viewers and subscribers, to leave your, your thoughts in the comment section as well, because I know my friend Ryan LFC, he's over on his channel crying right now because Liverpool were stunned by Crystal Palace as a um, getting an early goal in and then everything that followed basically cemented why Liverpool should not be title um, winners this season. Struggling Darwin Nunes, I, I, I personally think uh, he's had one of those seasons where he's given defenders a whole lot to deal with, but he just cannot finish to save his life. And that's what's across Liverpool this, the, the title this year. Darwin Nunes said, um, I'm putting it out there, Darwin Nunes is the reason Liverpool will not win the Premier League this season. But Leon Bailey coming from the bench, and this is, and again, we're still auditioning because the World Cup, qualifier, the World Cup qualifiers for Jamaica begins early June. And with Leon Bailey out of the team, we're looking, we saw uh, Omari Hutchinson, two man of the match performances in, in a couple of draws uh for, for last week and we're looking at it and we say okay probably this this is a good thing for us probably he may come in and he may, he will step up to the plate but again the performance that he gave midweek in, in, in europe in the europa conference league and what he did today to secure <laughs> to secure the point uh well the points uh for aston villa and i know the, the, the topic or the title for this one is villains because the Arsenal fans and the Arsenal faithful were coming into this match thinking, hey, Liverpool lost, so it's just over to us now to win and we, we will be on top of the English Premier League. That was not to be because Aston Villa had other plans and I, I must say it's not just Leon Bailey because Ollie Watkins had a, had a wonderful game, I think. Um, Yuri Tillemans had a fantastic game as well. At smashing the post as well in, in in the second half. I think it's an overall big performance from Aston Villa. And this weekend, I think Aston Villa would be the last team that Arsenal wanted to play. And people will ask why why Aston Villa would be the last team you wanted us to play. And I'll tell you why. Right? The coach for Aston Villa, Unai Emery, was sacked by Arsenal. So naturally, he's going to have a point to prove. He's going to say, hey, you guys sacked me. And I'm coming back here to show you why the decision to sack me was a bad decision, right? So you always want to prove on, on, on your previous employers. Emmy Martinez, the same thing. You guys let me go. And look who's in goal now, David Raya. I'm 10 times better than David, David Raya. Um, I'm going to show you guys why you should have kept me. Again, Emmy Martinez, he went on to win the World Cup and all of that. So uh, I don't think he'll be dwelling too much on the fact that Arsenal um, let him go. But nonetheless, he he will have a point to prove for his previous employers. We move on, and in the midfield, we have Yuri Tillemans, who's auditioning for Arsenal. We know last summer uh, there were a lot of rumours that the transfer market was going crazy because there were rumours Yuri Tillemans was going to Arsenal. That didn't happen, but nonetheless, this summer, the opportunity may still very well present itself. So Yuri Tillemans auditioning to become an Arsenal player. We know Jorginho is at the back end of his career, and Jorginho... Uh, I, I don't personally I don't rate Jorginho, right? I think Yuri Tillemans is ten times better than Jorginho. And I think if Arsenal should get Yuri Tillemans and let Jorginho go, it would be a huge upgrade. So that's my view on that. So Yuri Tillemans coming into this game would, would, would be auditioning 
Also, Douglas Luiz, who didn't play today, again, there to provide moral support for his teammates, would also be auditioning had he been on the pitch. So there's so much for the Aston Villa team to prove. And people are saying, hey, Arsenal coming into this one, they needed to get it done. They um, seen what happened at Anfield. It's extra motivation. Extra motivation, I agree. But you have to look on who they're playing against. And also, I think the substitutions by um, by Mikel Arteta weren't the greatest of substitutions. And, and you say, hey, but he didn't have anyone on the bench and all of that. You don't take off um, Martin Odegaard. Regardless of what's happening on the field, he has to, to die out there. You don't take him off. No, you don't take him off. It's, and I, I share the similar, uh, I share the same view as I do with Kevin De Bruyne. Like, if Manchester City is in a game that they need to win, you don't take off Kevin De Bruyne, no matter what's happening. So that's my take on Martin Odegaard. You don't take off Odegaard for the first half. Odegaard was the one controlling everything. Everything that Arsenal did great going forward was due to Odegaard. So why do you take him off in the second half? That doesn't make any sense. And maybe that's something Mikel Arteta needs to learn. His substitutions and the timing of his substitutions have been questionable at times. Sometimes they work, don't get me wrong. But most of the times, like, there's just this huge question mark over your head. Like, what is he doing? So um, I think the substitutions for Arsenal today, uh, Mikel Arteta got them wrong. Don't take off Martin Odegaard. But on Aston Villa's standpoint, I think that Leon Bailey substitution, it, it made all the difference. And it's basic. And, and, and I'm not just saying this because Leon Bailey came on and scored. I'm saying this because his overall game, his overall contribution to the team basically put them up. I, I think it, 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 there was more attacking threat when he came on. He, he was more forward thinking. He wanted to drive at defenders. He wanted to bring the team forward. And I think that's... That's what the team needed at, at, at that point in time. I think Moussa Diaby, his 60 minutes, he, he was working hard. He was getting back and defending and all of that. Um, but it got to a stage where we could see that his legs had left him. He was super tired. He was exhausted. He couldn't drive at the defenders anymore. And Zinchenko was there for the taking. Right? How do you go up against Zinchenko and it's almost as if you can't dribble Zinchenko? Zinchenko, who is not one of the better defenders in the Premier League. Right? So... I think Zin Zinchenko was there for the taking. Diaby didn't take that opportunity. And when Leon Bailey came on, the, that's where the difference was because he was everywhere. He was hard to cope with. And in the end, him sneaking in at the back post where Declan Rice was the closest defender to him. And Declan Rice was probably um, 200. <laughs> Declan Rice was probably 250 meters from him. That's the distance in space that was allowed. And I, I, I think, again, we, we don't play the significance of John McGinn um, because he doesn't offer that flair and all of that. And I put it out there, John McGinn is a better footballer than Declan Rice, right? So you can blow it up and you can tell everybody that Halftime TV said so. John McGinn at Aston Villa is a better footballer than Declan Rice. You see all that English hype and all of that with Declan Rice? Um, John McGinn is superior football player. Right? Big up yourself, Elvis Cross. Big up yourself. But Aston Villa were the true villains today because they all but confirmed who the 2023-2024 Premier League title winner will be. All right, And you say, but there are six games to go. I can't see City losing those six games. I expect Arsenal to just drop points again. <laughs> no, I expect, I expect Arsenal to drop points again. Remember, Arsenal still has Tottenham to play. And that's a huge London derby. And uh, again, this is Tottenham. And Tottenham will always have a point to prove. I know Chelsea is going over to Arsenal to play as well. And they too, even in their worst season, will want to have a say to ensure that Arsenal doesn't win anything this season. Liverpool, on the other hand, uh, we couldn't see them slipping up today. I think most people were saying they lost against Atalanta midweek. But them coming back to this game on the weekend, it'll be three points and then they'll be on their way again back to the old Liverpool and all of that. That wasn't to be because Crystal Palace, they had other plans and they secured a big three points against um, Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. So I'll go over to the comment section now and hear what's popping. Elvis Cross, big up yourself. Rob Smith, uh, you know, someone said Chippy couldn't play for Arsenal. You're crazy, bro. Uh, you're crazy. Definitely. He, he, he could play for this Arsenal team. I think Arsenal had Saka today. Saka, um, he was defending. He was everywhere. Um, and 
again, it, it just wasn't enough. I think the difference with Arsenal um, on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side is on Saka's flank, there isn't an obvious replacement. On, on the other side, you have Trossard who can come in and replace... Um, you have Trossard who can come in and replace Martinelli or vice versa. But on Saka's side, it's basically you run him into the ground. So he plays, he plays, he plays until he gets injured or something. So Saka has to stay out there until thy kingdom come. Magina Bala, if they had their best 11, doesn't even play that position he played today. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Because had Douglas Lewis been available, he would have been playing in that McGinn position. So McGinn basically was, was sitting in or, or um, asked to play that role in Douglas Lewis's absence. And I think he had a fantastic game. I know we will say Oli Watkins got on the score sheet and Leon Bailey got on the score sheet. And those guys will go on to be the, the, the match winners. But what McGinn did for this Aston Villa team today in a midfield, Arsenal midfield that had... And I don't want anyone to tell me about Kai Havertz playing midfield because Kai Havertz, nine out of ten times, he was playing as a second striker or even the first striker. It was... Um, what's his name? Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard in midfield. And Yuri Tielemans and John McGinn gave them a run for their money. Uh, I have to say, I have to put it out there. In the second half, Aston Villa totally, totally dominated this game. And I think Arsenal and the beautiful football that we've, we've grown accustomed to seeing them, and especially this season under Mikel Arteta, they've been, they've been good, don't get me wrong, right? But I think the Arsenal fans, they are the ones who got a little bit carried away. They actually thought this was a season. But Leon Bailey and Aston Villa had other plans. And at the Emirates, today, they showed up and they broke Arsenal hearts. I think at 94 minutes, at 94 minutes, there were maybe 15 or 20 Arsenal fans left in the stadium. <laughs> we, we could see a sea of red, a sea of red seeds, right? A sea of red seeds. And the same thing over at Anfield. So big up the Anfield loyals. Um, big up Ryan LFC and big up all the, the, the Liverpool fans. Um, I, I, I'm happy Crystal Palace did what they had to do. Um, and I think it's been a fantastic Sunday for football. It's been a fantastic Sunday for the English Premier League. Manchester City will win the league, you know. But it's fine. It's fine because Manchester City doesn't really have any fans. Manchester City's fans is like a handful. Um, and I, I can live with those Manchester City fans. The Arsenal fans and the Liverpool fans, they've been so vocal over the past couple of weeks. And I think this, what we saw today, was uh, basically striking some, some semblance of balance in the universe. But again... That's my biased opinion, um, and I'm curious to hear what you, <laughs> I'm curious to hear what you, the viewers and subscribers, have to say. So leave it in the comment section. Leon Bailey with a fantastic cameo, uh, 30 minutes off the bench to break Arsenal hearts and to all but secure who the 2023-2024 Premier League champion will be. It looks like it's cities for the. The, the taking and if they should lose from here on remember city is two points clear now city on 73 arsenal on 71. leon bailey from a statistics per, um, point of view he's now up to 13 goals and 12 assists in 45 games this season nine goals in the premier league which is good to see so um a brilliant game from leon bailey and bringing that inspiration just when his team needed it needed it most and again i know all the jamaican fans the arsenal fans who are jamaicans they'll be looking on and they'll be kicking themselves and for the neutrals who are jamaican fans as well they'll be happy like myself to see what leon bailey did but until next time viewers subscribers remember like share subscribe leave your thoughts on that performance from the man himself below um we'll leave it at that for today and we're saying have a fantastic week peace out what good Arsenal, uh, Crimea River, Liverpool, Crimea River, maybe next season. Um, yeah, peace.